Hi folks, we are on some Chapter 4 homework problems. Here's number 17. A cup of coffee is on a table in a camper driving at a constant speed on a flat and level road. The coefficient of static friction between the cup and the table is 0 .300. Suddenly the driver accelerates the camper forward and what is the maximum rate at which the camper can accelerate without the cup sliding backwards? Now, picturing this is a little bit tricky, so let's just start out with our picture. Here's our cup sitting on a table. It's got gravity pulling it down. Normal force is up. Friction is pulling it backwards. And there is a force applied that is going to occur because of the acceleration of the entire camper. This gets a little bit tricky to visualize because of this, this whole, you know, it's a cup sitting in a moving camper. But here's the logic of the thing. For the cup not to move, not to move, we want the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction have got to equal zero. That's kind of the trick in this whole problem, or the, or the thing, the nugget of thing you of the thing you have to know. So if, as we sum the forces horizontally, we have to look at situation where those are going to equal zero, and the sum of the forces vertically are going to be zero. So our vertical forces, we're going to have normal force and gravity. So the normal force will be equal to the force of gravity. And as you and I know, force of gravity is mass times acceleration of gravity. Um, do we know the mass of the cup? Nowhere in this problem does it say anything about the mass of the cup. So fear not, that means it is going to carry through as a variable. And that is okay. If you don't know the mass of something, um, very often that just means it's going to be a variable and it will cancel eventually in the problem. Now horizontally, if the sum of the forces equal zero, that means force applied will equal friction force. So the force applied will equal my force of friction. And the force applied is going to be mass times acceleration, and the force of friction is mu times normal force. Now, mass times acceleration, this is um, boop, 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 boop. Um, this is going to be um, the mass of the cup, um, the rate of, at which the whole thing is accelerated. So let's carry this through. Mu we know is 0.3. Normal force we know is this right here, so I'm going to pull that over, times 9.8 meters per second squared. And these are both the mass of the cup. You've got the mass on both sides, so those are going to cancel. See, I told you the mass would cancel. So what is the maximum rate that everything can accelerate? Well, the only thing we don't have an answer for is A. So it's going to be 0 0.3 times 9.8. So 0 0.3 times 9.8, when I do pick up my calculator, I get 2.94 meters per second squared. Problem that is a little tricky because there's an awful lot you don't know but if you stick to the physics, write everything out, it works. Next one, number 18. Here goes nothing. Uh, Griselda decides to move a box of stuff into her apartment by pulling on a long rope attached to a box. She pulls with a force of 80 newtons at an angle of 20 degrees above horizontal. The box has a mass of 25 kilograms. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the floor is 0.3. What's the rate of acceleration of the box? All right, we're going to draw a pretty box. She has a rope attached to the box. She is going to pull on that rope with 80 newtons of force at an angle of 25 degrees above the horizontal. Um, let's see, the box has a mass of 25 kilograms. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the floor is 0 0.300. What is the rate of acceleration of the box? That's what we know. Now let's draw our forces. What do we have? Well, gravity. We always have gravity down. What force goes up? Normal. Yep, that's the supporting force of the surface. What force opposes motion? Friction goes backwards. 
Now, our goal when we do problems is to get problem, all of our forces in an x and y plane, either on the, the y up and down axis or the x-axis. So if you ever have a force that's up at an angle like this, you have to break those into components. So I'm going to go ahead and make a triangle out of this, and I'm going to have the force parallel, which is going to be 80 newtons, and this is the adjacent side, so it's times the cosine of 25 degrees, and this is going to be the force perpendicular, which is going to be 80 newtons times, and this is using the opposite, so times the sine of 25 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and do the math on that. So the force perpendicular is 25 sine times 80, and this is going to be 30, so force perpendicular, I get 33.8 newtons. Put a bubble around that so I can find it. Force parallel is going to be 25 sine times 80. I said sine again, didn't I? How about cosine? There we go. Times 80, and I get 30.6 newtons. That looks stupid. I'm going to do that again. 25 cosine times 80. How about 72.5? Do you like that better? Oh, good. Me too. Okay, 72.5. That just got a silly number. It didn't make me happy. Okay, now that we've got all of our forces, what we're going to do is we're going to sum the forces vertically and horizontally. Whoops, lost things again. Like I said, it always pops back. It just sometimes I confuse it when I'm doing too much on my little screen here. And what we're going to do is we are going to sum the forces horizontally, and we're going to sum the forces vertically. Now, in the horizontal direction, back and forth, we have to ask ourselves a question. Do they equal 0 or ma? So back and forth, 0 or ma? Well, we're asked to find acceleration, so they're going to equal ma. Remember, Newton said you only have two choices. Everything equal is going to accelerate or not in each plane. So in this plane, we're accelerating vertically up and down, 0. Seldom are we going to have things that don't equal 0, because a lot of times we have stuff that's just sitting on a surface. Now, I'm going to highlight all my forces. This is an up force. This is an up force. This is a down force sideways forces. This is a sideways force, and this is a sideways force. So when we go ahead and draw our forces, we have to make sure we include all of them. So horizontally, I have got force parallel, force parallel, minus the force of friction, minus the force of friction, it's in the opposite direction, is going to make my mass accelerate. Force applied parallel minus force of friction is going to make my mass accelerate. Vertically, the forces up are going to equal the forces down. So force normal plus force perpendicular, normal plus perpendicular are going to equal force of gravity. Now what do we do? We put in numbers where we have them and we solve. So force parallel is 72.5 newtons. Force of friction is mu times normal force. Mass, mass, I went a little too far down. I can't see my mass. I don't know my mass. Oh, no. My mass is 25 kilograms, and I'm looking for rate of acceleration A. Keep going. 72.5 newtons minus mu. I know mu. Mu is 0.3 from up in the right. 0.3 times normal force equals 25 kilograms times a. All right, one equation, two unknowns, normal and A. I stop, I go to the other side because I've run out of stuff I can plug in over here. Okay, I'm going to change colors. Normal force plus perpendicular. Perpendicular is 33.8 equals force of gravity. Force of gravity we know is mass times acceleration of gravity plus 33.8. Mass is 25 kilograms. Acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. I got lazy with my units there. Forgive me, old gods of physics. 
25 times 9.8, let's grab a calculator, is 245, 45 newtons. Now I want to get all of those on one side, so I'm going to subtract 33.8 from both sides. So my normal force will be, normal force will be 245 minus 33.8. My normal force is 211.2, and we're keeping it 3 sig fig, so that's my normal force. I'm going to plug that back in here, 72.5 minus 0.3 times 211 equals 25 kilograms times A. I'm going to pull all that way down here so I have room to write. So 72.5 newtons, 0.3 times, 0.3 times 211 is 63.3 equals 25 kilograms times A. So 72.5 minus I end up with 9.2 newtons equals 25 kilograms A, or A is 9.2 kilograms divided by 20, whoops, newtons, 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 divided by 25 kilograms, and all she wrote, I get an acceleration of 0.368 meters per second squared. And does that make sense? I think it's pretty darn close. All right, we are going to call that good. We're going to do more of these. We'll see you then.